Um, so next up, um, we're going to look at uh, sort of pay TV's response, if you like, to the sort of headwinds in the industry, which we had just did discuss this morning. And I'd like to give you like you guys to give our next guest a huge welcome. It's Patrick Delaney, he's CEO of Foxtel Group, who's interviewed by Leo Shanahan from The Australian. Please. Hi. Oh, well, good afternoon. Can everyone hear me all right? Uh, my name is Leo Shanahan. I'm the media editor of The Australian and I'm also co-host of uh, Business Weekend on Sky and we're actually uh, taping this interview for my program as well. Uh, look, uh, we'll kick off, Patrick. Um, this topic is uh, notionally called TV advertising and in the attention economy. Now, Foxhell's history has been one of the original winners, I suppose, of the uh, attention economy, moving viewers away from free-to-air television, huge uptick in IQT in uh, 2005, uh, but then came along something called streaming and Netflix, and we've seen this huge migration over to those platforms. Where does Foxtel fit today in the market? Because there's a lot of people who say, well, it just doesn't. It's now an irrelevance. Yeah. Well, uh, I thought it was very interesting listen, listening to the latest reinvention of Andrew Ginsberg as Osher. Uh, I was the chief executive of XYZ Entertainment in the era that Channel V uh, was putting out all of those innovations back in um, 1998. And that's not my recollection uh, of Foxtel. Foxtel has been a company that has battled its whole life to make sure it is relevant and make sure it can deliver innovation and follow consumers. I mean, we didn't make any money until, I think, 1997. Um, and in terms of breakthroughs, you're right, the IQ2 was a breakthrough, but we've always had to battle. And I think the, the breakthrough was making sure that we could deliver the innovation of being able to record, which in those days was probably the closest you could get to on demand, uh, and then continue to deliver content, which was very different to other places. But the other secret's always been aggregation. So it's interesting, the name of this conference is about the future and it's also about attention. I think uh, the Australian television industry has always leant forward, Foxtel has always leant forward into the future. And there's no doubt about it that innovation is part of that. Attention has always been a really big issue and it's part of Foxtel's life the whole way through. To go from three free-to-air channels to 20 channels gave fabulous choice, and it wasn't a problem. Everyone wanted lots of choice. When we got to 100 channels, it was a great marketing claim, but you do get to a situation where you go, well, there's a lot on, but what am I going to watch? You also get another feature, and that is the more consumers get of choice, the more discerning they become of that choice and wanting to find it down. And I think that's the stage that we've got to where there is overwhelming choice whether it's on the Foxtel platform or other platforms. So in terms of relevance, Foxtel still is Australia's biggest media company, turning over $3 billion. We have 2,600 Australian employees. We also have others around the world. But it is a very, very big company, and it continues to have huge relevance. The thing that has changed about Foxtel very much in the last 18 months is a massive shift towards video on demand and streaming. And while we still see a large proportion of our viewership in live channels, uh, we will by the end of this financial year have 60% of our subscribers on IQ3s and 4s, which are streaming machines. So on those, we still are an aggregator. We aggregate all of our own streaming. So we have really worked hard in the last 18 months to pick up full stacks and seasons of all of the things you see on the channels, but our own premium things, like HBO. Um, we can still, so you can stream, you can record, and now we're aggregating others. So I think it was a shock to most people we did Netflix. It shouldn't have been, we should have done it five years ago. If our position in the market is to aggregate, then what's the difference between aggregating a channel, aggregating VOD that we buy, or aggregating other people's services? And the key to it, and the relevance of Foxtel is to make sure that we keep it simple. If you've looked at an IQ 3 or 4, they work flawlessly and they put everything in one place. But that's just one part of the Foxtel Group story because right. we have not just stuck 
in the set-top box. All right, I do want to ask you more about the aggregation strategy, but KO, your own streaming service, uh, which was launched not much more than a year ago, uh, has done extremely well, although recently, for the first time, uh, people reporting numbers have gone back in the latest News Corp results slightly. Let's talk about some of that churn in KO and uh, I suppose that issue of comp competing with yourself there. D does it cannibalise yeah. Foxtel users? So one of the things uh, as a, a Foxtel executive and a News Corp executive, you know that everyone's going to take a bit of a different view of you and your company than anyone else. So can we just like take a big breath and I'm going to give you my version of KO. KO is the most successful media business to have been launched in Australia in the last 25 years, including Foxtel, if it's owned by Australians, right? Now, Netflix is pretty good, but to have 400,000 paying customers for sports alone at a premium price of 25 bucks with no tricks, no bells, no whistles is one hell of an achievement. It is a big business already, and it has grown very, very well. So, I'll go back to your framing. You know, has it faltered? No, it hasn't. It's a sports business. In Australia, there are five big sports. Four of them end at the end of September. They start tailing off and we go into one sport, which is cricket. So, KO's number on a pure paid basis will never be bigger at the end of December than it is at the end of September. And at the end of December, the cricket has only just started. Now, it is a sports streaming service. We at News Corp are very harsh on the number. We just say a paid number. Have you noticed most streaming services up to now haven't even called out whether they're paid and only recently they've started with the word active, which sort of probably means, I assume, because it's not defined, that it's somehow a subscriber that has the app, might not be paying, might be paying. You see that even in the Australian services. So our paid number is a pure paid number. It probably is very unfair. That's a Foxtel type uh, number that you should anchor when you have hardware and you have contracts because once someone goes, they're probably not coming back. The streaming world's not like that. If you average out the subscribers like prepaid does, or maybe to take seasonality out of it, you do a rolling six months, you'll see an extraordinary growth story. Right? And we're about to go back into the winter season and it started growing again. So it's a really good business. But I've got to say this, again in Foxtel style, this is, this is not a journey for the faint of heart. Because probably your next question is going to be, is that what the Foxtel problem is with, with churn? And a lot of people ask me. And I read all of the articles. And I've got to say this, that the churn parameters of KO are, are way below what we thought it was going to do. And it's partly because, or a lot because, of the strategy. The strategy is that Foxtel only goes to 30% of Australians. That's all we're able to monetize a huge amount of fixed cost rights, whether it's in sports or non-sport. So how do you get the rest of the country to see this and pay? So part of the strategy is it's not Foxtel, it's KO. Completely different zeitgeist personality, everything about it. Second thing is the form factor is much different to watching your channel. If you go onto KO, it really does look like a streaming service. Everything is all created like it, like it is VOD. You can find the channels if you really look hard, but that's not what we're doing there. It's dishing it up using algorithms and an amazing platform that was Australian built. So what we're finding is probably that any subs we're losing for sports, probably they should never have been on Foxtel. If you've got to uh, install a set-top box, do all the marking and everything else, KO is a fabulous zero-cost installation type thing, and the company now has more sports subscribers than we have ever had in the history of the company. Customers that we are losing at Foxtel are the low value ones that in the last five years we probably shouldn't have chased. $26 basic at Foxtel is not a great experience, especially if you don't have an IQ4. And I can tell you from a capital standpoint, income standpoint, it's not a good experience either. So we have put our prices up and our packages up for 50 bucks now. You get an IQ4, you get all of our streaming capability and basic. So a lot's changed. Uh, and that's part of I, sorry, have I? No, 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 yeah. sorry. <laughs> I was going to ask you though, about rugby. I know what you're going to ask. Well, <laughs> I'm going to ask about rugby because ah. uh, people like myself have written a lot about it. Uh, there's this, you know, ongoing apparent uh, battle with, the, uh, with Rugby Australia as to where Foxtel stands. Uh, 
is Foxtel or Fox Sports going to make a bid for rugby rights? Uh, what's the latest on that situation? So uh, we don't comment on rights bids, especially when someone's running a live process. I, w I do want to make one clarification. The last two cycles of the rugby have gone to market. Uh, we've competed on an open market, so th th there's no hard feeling about that. Uh, we're used to it. And we also had a six-week one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, exclusive negotiating period. So, you know, Rugby Australia and, and Foxtel Group know where each other stand. I, I think that's where I'd rather lead it. Um, they're running their process and it sort of will be what it will be. Could KO afford to lose, though, say a, say a rugby from its lineup at this juncture? It, it is worth actually, in the spirit of the, um, of the conference, talking about uh, the attention economy and the future to make a couple of comments. Generally, and I don't make this specifically in sport, but in the first two years of me being in the job, we focused as a team very much on changing the product model. So what you see on Foxtel is utterly different to what you have in the past. Fearlessly going for streaming, pushing it hard on air, getting all the right things. We have fearlessly launched KO, and there's speculation about whether we will do the same thing in drama and movies. That's the first stage. The second stage is this, and I think it's the theme of what um, Usher talked about, and I, I presume all of the others. I hear uh, Viacom CBS talked about channels and everything else. You know, people's tastes change over time. Um, the type of cooking show that the Lifestyle Channel put up, or Channel 10, I think Channel 10 was Bernard King back in the 80s, right? So you have one man standing there doing a, a recipe with a single locked off camera. It's very different to the way, uh, uh, say, MasterChef uh, worked. And then now tastes have changed. In every genre we're seeing this. Sometimes it's caused by the form factor that emerges. So Netflix, there is no doubt, has pushed the form factor of being able to stream and binge drama, and that's become bigger than movies, right? So sometimes it's that. Sometimes it's just uh, society changing its views. Like, we, we are all worried about the climate. We are all worried about respect, all of those things. They change. And other times, it's just the forces of nature that push a certain genre or whatever. And I think this happens in, in every genre. Including sport. Including sport. All right. Now, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned the drama streaming model uh, or, the, or the new drama streamer, Project Ares, as it's called uh, at News Corp, the entertainment streaming service. Mm. Uh, now, you'll go head to head against the likes of Stan uh, and Netflix, but also now Disney and Amazon as well. How do you hope com to compete in such a crowded market? Yeah. So, you, you know, all of the leaders of the, of the Australian media business talk. It's a bit different to 20 years ago when they would headbutt each other. Um, from time to time, we compete vigorously, but we talk a lot. All of us have got the same headwinds uh, going on. All of us are seeking to innovate. Um, so this Project Aries thing that, uh, that the press talks about, um, what I can comment is this, that we've got an extraordinary platform in KO. Uh, it, it has all of the smarts. It's been built the, and plumbed the way we are now re-plumbing Foxtel and bringing all of the assets of the group together. It's got a world-class data platform through which I'm sure my colleagues at Foxtel Media will talk about when it's linked up, what we can do with addressability, predictability, all of those things. So we've got the ability to use that platform in multiple genres. We have huge fixed costs, non-compressible fixed costs in many areas. And some of them are the drama, the channels, and the movies. And so it would make sense, right, as we work through things, to do another version of, uh, of KO. And, and KO is, if I go back to KO, KO is interesting because it, it is actually quite unique in the world in having every piece of sport that the cable platform has. We've held nothing back. But it's also, so on the Fox Sports side, it's also unique in that it is probably one of the world's first aggregators of multiple sports services. Because inside it, you've got the whole of uh, B in Sport and ESPN together with Fox Sports. So as we go forward, they're the things that we will look at. And, and you know, whether it's the Foxtel platform, which, which is looking for a new operating model, you know, the revenues and the subscribers, the cost bases will not be the same over the next couple of years while we try and find that sweet spot and we go hard on streaming. And, 
And I think things like Project Ares, things like KO, uh, are platforms from which uh, others can launch services and that we can buy, combine services. You've talked about updating and modernising your, your content model. Lower costs, new content deals. Last year you did deals with the BBC, uh, NBCU, ongoing rights deals. We mentioned rugby. Uh, Foxtel has a lot of content. Some would say almost too much. Yep. Uh, how painful are these new content deals? That's a great question, and, and it is true we have too much. I mean, in the attention economy, part of the issue is less is more. I think especially in advertising. That's why the, uh, the trend towards deeper integrations. Um, so it is true, we've got extraordinary load of content uh, that we can put out. I think modern interfaces, modern streaming methodologies allow you to use algorithms and data and interfaces to put the most relevant uh, material up. Um, but as we go forward, I think there'll be a second era of Foxtel. And, and as I say, the first era was reforming our product and incrementally changing costs. So the deals we announced last year with the BBC, uh, with um, uh, Universal, they're very similar to the previous deals in that the channels remained, but we got all of the video on demand, so full stacks and seasons, and we got quite large costs down. But I call them incremental deals because nothing sort of looked different. Didn't drop anything. I think the next two years will be us fearlessly looking for the new model where we look at the way consumer trends have changed and tastes have changed, and for the first time ever we have the data that proves out exactly what's going on with the customer base. And we will have to be fearless, as I know my other colleagues in the Australian media business will have to be, very fearless about right, really moving towards the content people want and exploring that and being fearless about the past is the past, we might have to move on. Well, how tough is that in this environment where you've got over-the-top or, or go-it-alone models, the likes of Disney+, Plus, there's talk of HBO or others coming into market, CBS, Viacom. You know, how do you defend against that while at the same time making the, making the case uh, for, for good content deals that are worth it for Foxtel? Well, so far, Disney's the only one that's withdrawn its content. Yeah. I think the others, we see that there, there can be both things. There can be the, uh, the revenue from the Foxtel platform at the same time as the Foxtel platform representing the apps. And the platform we've got at Foxtel does that very, very well. At the same time, for strong positions like Australian local drama, sorry, Australian local sports, we are the aggregator, and it'll be interesting to see how that works going forward. I mean, at the moment, KO doesn't get added to ratings. Um, I know we've started sharing a little bit of data in around it, um, but, but it, it, the, the number of people watching is quite large, you know, on top of the ratings. Will KO be included in those ratings? Think? I think at some stage it will, yeah. yeah. It's a matter of finding those that know more about how to do all of that better than I do. We've now got a stable customer base, um, we've got a stable platform, and I, I think it, it probably needs to be added, yeah. Um, and integrations become a very important part of what we do. I mean, the, the sports business that we have, 75% of all of our advertising revenue is integrations and sponsorships. It's a key way to do it. Um, we're completely full every year. We appreciate the, the support of the advertising community. Hopefully, that's because we're being rewarded with innovation. Um, when I hear what 10's doing with all of its live, what 9's doing, what 7's doing, I think the, the local industry is seeking to completely respond in terms of, yes, our mass audiences, yes, our video, BVOD, SVOD, um, but also the way in which we integrate and use social media. Well, talking about integration, uh, you know, we, we talked about the Netflix deal, there's ABC, iView, uh, SBS as well. What other big platforms are you talking, are you speaking to Disney about integration as well? Who else are you hoping to get on the, on, on the network? I think, um, I think it's just a matter of resources and time. Mm. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to be on the, on the platform. I mean, we go to 2.1 million of Australia's best healed, highest demographic, best psychographic households. Um, and so why wouldn't you want to be there? And, and we're finding that with all of that players. The question is how quickly we can do it. Cause, because probably we should have been doing this a while ago. Yeah. Where does the Foxtel hardware fit in in all of this, Patrick, is a question that people ask a lot, I think. 
you know, in this day and age, with the streaming services, people say, well, it's bulky, it's expensive, it's it's. Where, how does that still have a role in 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 a, especially a company like Foxtel, which is reshaping itself as a streaming service? Well, I'd say that the Foxtel product is a premium product. It's anchored in innovation. The set-top box allows us to simplify things. It allows us it to enable a subscriber to continue to record if they want. If they don't want to record, you know, we're heavily in the cloud and, and virtualization through streaming. Um, the future set-top, we still have a future set-top box. It's likely that the disk drive will be severable from the main drive. It's likely that we will be completely in the, in the cloud while still using satellite for things like 4K and 8K. Um, at the moment, the set-top box gives us the privilege of being able to combine other services. Because why else would a streaming platform allow another one to combine them? The whole point is to go over the top. As things go forward, I don't know. Maybe the economics of having more households, having more revenue, having those customers will put us in a good position to do that. We're doing that with KO. So I don't know uh, how it will turn out. All I know is you've got to have a red hot go and be fearless and, and go for it. On the issue of privacy, obviously uh, the ACCC and the Digital Platforms Inquiry made some recommendations. I did an interview with Graham Burke, former Village uh, CEO on the weekend. He came up very strongly, uh, especially going after the platforms on this, uh, Google and Facebook pointing out to the government that not enough is being done. Uh, what are your thoughts on that area? Well, of course I agree with him, um, uh, but I would say and, right? So, so Graham is one of the great doyens of the Australian content business, an amazing executive, fantastic innovator, and when it comes to piracy, has been a leader and is tireless. Movies are a little bit, we've got a big problem with piracy of movies, just like networks do. You can just type in anything and, and uh, the sites will come up with where you can go pirate it. And so takedown laws and everything are important. But I go back, right back, and say, how come if Foxtel puts something up, it's my problem if copyright's not, uh, not cleared, yet for the new platforms, right, it's my problem to have to go and take it down. It shouldn't be that way around. It, if you are running a platform, it's you that has the obligation. It's you that should be monitoring and pulling it down before you're being asked. And I think that's where we need to move. You know, the, the, you look at the reality TV that we're talking about today, the dramas that Foxtel puts out, the sport we put out is completely combustible within an hour or two hours. It's not like a movie that's going to have a life forever. If that goes up on YouTube or Twitter or wherever, right, then on the last episode of The Masked Singer, right, and it's illegal and we're not monetizing, that's it, it's gone after that live broadcast. Three hour game of AFL is the longest we've got. NRL's 90 minutes. We've got m boxing matches where whole lives of Australian athletes hang on 10 seconds. So it, it should not be our problem, it's got to be the platform's problem and that's where we need to move the debate to. So I support Graham, but I say, yes, and let's get serious about this. Let's get serious about protecting Australian creative people, uh, protecting revenues, protecting advertisers, and God forbid, actually protecting Australian businesses. I did another interview with the executive chair of uh, Rob Morgan a couple of weeks back, uh, sorry, Clemenger, executive chair Rob, Rob Morgan. And uh, he described the current streaming environment as a shakeout and uh, said you, you can't live off subscriptions alone, uh, the prices just aren't high enough, and, and inevitably there will be advertising on the likes of Netflix, Amazon, all the rest. Your view on the inevitability of advertising on streaming services? I don't have a view. <laughs> I, I don't have a view, it's, it's sort of like asking someone in the middle of a race, in the middle of all of the turbulence to now commentate on it. Yeah. Um, and, and to tell you the truth, uh, we are in unprecedented times in every industry. You know, um, I was at the V8 supercars on the weekend, Holden withdrawing from it, right? The turbulence of that, but actually the whole automotive industry is about to go through what we're going through. You know, with electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, climate change movement pressing down on it. Who knows what evolves out of all of this? It is true that if you are Australian-based, like 10, 9, 7 broadcasters in Foxtel, we've got a much smaller market. We've got a smaller pool of, uh, of 
content and we've got less chance of monetizing it. So we're trying to do that by using the content Foxtel's already paid for and going for it. Someone like Netflix, right, it makes a show once and it uses it for 20 years and monetizes it across the world. So the economics are very different. Um, I, I can't even remember what their debt was. We've got debt too, so I'm not about to, you know, um, throw any stones on it, but, but they're having a red hot go. Yeah. And um, of course, what happens is when reality comes, right? So Foxtel is financing all of the innovations that we're going so hard on and being supported by shareholders to do from our own revenues. Um, at the moment, a lot of these companies have never made any money and they're going hard uh, with debt and financing. I don't know when the moment of reckoning is and you, and you have to do things. I do know this, I've heard Reed Hastings speak many, many times, very, very impressive executive and entrepreneur, and I know his philosophy is keep it simple, and advertising's never been part of it, so I don't know. We'll All see. right, on that simple yet complex note, Patrick Delaney, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.